Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another great episode of Comics Remixed, Breaking the Fourth Wall segment, episode two for the year. We have not showered and or left this spot since our last episode. That's how we roll. We we're Junior. waiting for you. We yeah. love you. I'm Junior Ruiz, alongside David Sanchez. And uh, last ep- last week we covered the uh, Comixology news. Yep. We covered my, uh, your review of Mighty Con. It was a great experience. Thank you very much, Bill, for having us. And we also covered... Um, uh, big news in digital uh, with the Comixology bundle. And also, if you haven't already, it ends in March. Enter at newcadia.com for your chance to win a piece of $50,000 worth of comic swag. Don't use that word. Swag. Let's see. Uh, anyway. Um, so, yeah. Booty. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving on, Go ahead. moving on, continuing from what we started last week with the whole uh, stuff that has happened in our off season, David, forever evil. Yeah, man. Hey, I uh, Junior, Junior caught me up on what's been going on in comics. You, uh, and I was reading uh, some some bits of Forever Evil, and uh, I got spoiler to alert. Got, yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Because recently it's been revealed that it's uh, Alexander Luthor. Mm-hmm. Earth three hours and that's the prisoner. Order. That's they got they got the bag over his head and yeah. uh, prison style. They got him in there, and and they, the reason that they fear him, uh, the syndicate fears him, mm-hmm. is because he he's basically the equivalent of their Shazam. Yeah, but it's a Shazam that could also absorb the powers. Of people like so, it's it's a it's a Highlander Shazam. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, it's Highlander. Okay, <laughs> and that's what this whole thing is. It's fucking Highlander. <laughs> um. And it, uh, a more interesting twist, and I think it's the best thing about this entire thing, is that he's not actually a hero. He's his world's definition of a hero. Mm-hmm. Because in uh, in Earth 3, it's, it's, it's a realm evil. Where, where, where evil exists. There's a better term for it. I can't believe I just had a brain fart. But yeah, it's, it's where evil resides. Mm-hmm. It's the Earth where evil resides. And I guess his definition of being a hero... It's, it's like being Highlander. It's like there can only be one. Right. It's fucking high. I can't stop thinking about Highlander. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> so, no, what did you think about Forever Evil? Um, number six came out two weeks ago. It was, uh, it was all right. It's hard to be surprised nowadays, though, especially when you have um, all these websites and stuff that are spoiling what's coming yeah. out before yeah, the book yeah, ships. Yeah. Side note, for those who haven't uh, checked it out, you guys have got to check out, and I mentioned it uh, on Spinner Rat, the Twitter war between Bleeding Cool Magazine's Rich Johnston and Dan Slott. What? Was Dan Slott what? was laying a smackdown. Dan for Slott them. also had uh, the stuff with uh, Rob Liefeld, right? I they had a remember. Twitter war. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Um, but he was laying a smackdown on Bleeding Cool for being one of those sites that are sitting there and spoiling things before people get a chance to come in the store and buy it. Yeah. Like, Tuesday night, they'll go ahead and spoil something. Dan Slash, dude, why don't you just let the fans read it first yeah. and then talk about it, you know? And they I were going back and forth. It was interesting, but the only reason I bring that up is because it's hard to be surprised anymore with stuff. And, like, in Forever Evil, number six, you know, the fate of Nightwing and who is the hooded prisoner and stuff. Uh, and, like I said, spoiler alert, so if you still haven't read Forever, Forever Evil dude. 6... okay. What's happening? Is Nightwing? Is my man dead? Is I'm, he dead, man? I'm going to go ahead and say no. What? Okay, so what happens... Okay. Lay, lay it out. Lay it out. Nightwing is hooked up to a machine that can only... Uh, it's a bomb. The bomb can yes. only be deactivated when Nightwing's heart stops. So Nightwing's heart is being... Uh, beating is actually fueling the bomb. Right. So in order, obviously in order to stop the bomb, you got to stop Nightwing's heart. So Luther kind of puts his hand over Nightwing's mouth and nose, kind of like to suffocate him. And um, he's all, he's doing the deed. Batman jumps in. He's like, "No, Luther, you're an animal. How could you do that?" And they're fighting. Right, right. right. Night. They show Nightwing's panel or a panel over to Nightwing. His head is de- you know down hanging. Like, oh no, he's dead. Luther's like, no, it's not. It, they know they don't say he's dead, but you know you kind of get that feeling. And then Luther's trying to yell at Batman while he's beating on him. He's like, wait. It's not what it looks like. Would you let me explain? Blah, blah, blah. And that's all they left at it now. But I think it's one of those things that the, they teach in the military, like where they, they tell you how to uh, slow your pulse down, stop your heartbeat, you know, uh, so it doesn't beat as Right, right, as right. yeah. yeah I think, <coughs> excuse me. You can, you I can think get it was some type of medicine that will do that. Yeah, too, I think it was something in that aspect where 
Luther knew some missed. little little trick or whatever where you know he slowed Nightwing's heart down enough to it fooled the machine to think that you know oh he's dead or something you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, think that's what it is. Poet. Now the fact that they're also ending Nightwing next month in April with issue thirty leaves people saying oh and there's a the cover is a bloody Nightwing mask you know yeah. but I don't think he's dead. No, I I think uh. To add to that, one thing that could be happening that, that they've been doing lately is like one book will get canceled, but then that character will show up in a team up. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're they're revamping the Titans again, and or the Teen Titans new lineup or something like that. Mm -hmm. That could also be another thing. You know, who knows? But I'm glad I'm glad to hear someone someone say that because I'm I'm a huge Nightwing fan and I would not like him to die. One thing we actually should have started the show with. Speaking of death. Uh, January 1st, for the, obviously everybody knows by now, James Avery passed away. For those who don't know, James Avery was uh, Uncle Phil on The Fresh Prince, but the reason we bring it up is because he was also the voice of Shredder in the original Ninja Turtles cartoon. Yeah. So, James Avery, may you rest in peace. But also, um, a couple weeks back, Harold Harold Ramis, Ramis yeah. passed away. You know, Egon from the Ghostbusters. Well, you know, he's been in plenty of movies, but that to me was the movie that I associated him with the so most. So many you know? movies. He, he, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What he's done for movies in general has been amazing, and and the fact that he did he did not just Ghostbusters, but also Caddyshack, Groundhog Day, and he's he's helped produce and write so many other things has just been amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the fact that he was toward the end of his life, he was gonna bring back Ghostbusters for us for the fans. You know, it's, this this guy he he was a great man. He was an awesome artist and. He will definitely be missed. Uh, one thing uh, about his death was because uh, it was it was felt amongst the Ghostbusters community and the artists as well. You've seen like yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of art just flood the yeah, internet. Some of those some of those were really really good pieces. Yeah, and uh, even IDW they came out with like their own their own posters. The one with the jacket hanging in the locker. Yeah, I saw that. I saw and that. And then and the the T-shirt. Now, how do you feel about that? Is it like because I mean they're selling this stuff, you know. Yeah, okay. It, it's they're not selling. They're not technically selling a Harold Ramis piece. They're selling an Egon piece, but they're capitalizing the sale of it based on his death. Is is there any intel on this? Do we know if any of this is going to like a certain foundation or anything like that? I don't know. Or is it just like straight capital that that they're grabbing off this? I'm sorry to put a negative spin on this, but it's something that that I thought of. Well, um, there was there was a, a post that they put on because right now. All these cons going on. Um, <coughs> they made they made the the, the black t shirt with the silhouette the the vignette of the locker room that locker image, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Get it now at the Comic Con." You know, I understand there's a want for it because mm -hmm. it's such a cool image. People do want it, and uh, and they they made the demand. So there is a business thing. But I mean, if I was at a store and I seen a shirt that had that, you know, something like w one of these. Um, Commemorative. I would say a commemorative. But it's commemorative. Yeah, I guess this. Um, tribute. It's commemorative. Images. It's okay, commemorative yeah. images on a T-shirt or something like if they had one at Walmart for some god awful reason. I mean, I'd totally pick it up. Only yeah, because they show my support that I was a fan, you know. And you know, he he uh, helped. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have had Ghostbusters, and I wouldn't have had the hours of enjoyment I've had. Yeah, I guess I, I, it's me. I'm reading too much into it. I don't want to be an a. -hole. But you don't. You don't have a. You're not bringing up a bad point either. You know, it's like, is IDW donating it? Or are they just kind of using this to, you know, hey, let's sell some T-shirts? Yeah. You know? So let's see. Let's see what happens, you know? All right. What else we got, David? Uh, Moon Knight, man. Um, I Making start, a comeback. I What's started reading on? Moon Knight. I didn't get to finish it. Um, I had the timing issues. But uh, it's a different spin on it from what I did read. Uh, this one I will not give spoilers on, so you're going to have to go check that out. Okay. But um, it was very different. You know, they are playing up the, uh, the personalities, of course. And uh, it, it's not from what I the, the couple pages I read. It's not the it's not the Moon Knight you remember. So this is a new guy. Do they revamp. No, it's still Mark Specter. Is he still just like a schizophrenic? Yeah, he's got the guy? four personalities. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's the same, but with a twist. What's the twist? You're gonna have to read it. I'm not spoiling it. Oh, come on, come on. Okay, okay. Well, you have to check out my review tomorrow. Boom. The the twist is it. Cheap plug. All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Junior's going to have a review of Moon Knight coming out. Uh, catch it. It's going to be a Facebook exclusive. For no, no. Oh, you're throwing oh, it's It'll for be the site. It's for yeah. the site. So go on comicstreamings.com for the review on Moon Knight. Just on a side note, I've got I've, I've to put this out there. 
I will be doing reviews on comics. Those will be video. Brian, on the other hand, will also still be posting reviews directly to Facebook okay. in a written format. But we're not going to, um, there's going to be times where we crisscross on, and review the same book only because we might have difference of opinion on them. And that's always great. So that's always great that to get those two points of views out there. What else we got, man? Times are running. Um, speaking of, of new comics, I mentioned in our last episode that Junior has tried to catch me up to speed because I don't buy mainstream comics at all. So Junior gave me a, gave me a shit ton of comics. He's like, just read them, damn it. And one of the comics that stood out to me was the Teen Titans, uh, the point one issue. Oh, the, the Villains Death Month. The Villains Month. Deathstroke. It was Deathstroke. I liked a lot of the, the Villains Month stuff. I got to read them a lot because they were someone else's books. <laughs> and um, <coughs> at the very beginning of the book, it might have been like page two, Deathstroke is having this flashback sequence of when him and Bloodsport used to be partners and mercenaries and used to, they used to go kill people like in Cambodia and he's talking about um, this war that they were in and how they were partners in like the 1994 era out in the Ukraine like in the Balkans okay and uh, one thing that got to me it's, it sounds simple enough but it got to me the fact that wait a minute how were they there at this point when like basically my, my brain kind of flipped over because I was like crap it's the new 52 that's why and and I had to put the book down I what couldn't, do you, wait, I couldn't you lost me what are you saying what is your gripe the time gap okay the time gap I can't accept that that uh, so much has happened in, in five or years. six five or well ten years yeah okay has that has that happened to you yet it's happened with everybody, especially Superman and the, and Batman with having so many sidekicks in the six years that he's been Batman. And, you know, I couldn't accept it at first because I wasn't reading a lot of the New 52, and I would hear people bitch about it, like, online, and I would troll them and kind of mess with them a bit. And now that it happened to me, I'm like, holy crap, it does mess with you. And I couldn't believe it. It just caught me off guard, man. Because remember, I mean, you also got to keep in mind, year one for... The New 52 is uh, the introduction of Superman, Action Comics. So before he came in, obviously the DCU still existed. So I'm sure Slade Wilson did stuff, you know, prior to that. And that stuff could have taken place while, you know, that debut of Superman up to the f year, f year four before the Justice League debut. Yeah, but you this know? is like before, like before he even be lost his eye. Right. So this you would know? be way more than ten years. Yeah, ago. and before that, all I could think about is like uh, that cool run of Green Arrow, where that he was involved in that Chud, uh, Judd Winnick. Judd Winnick was writing it, and that that's what I think about that happened in that time. Right. So the shock, it was like really quick. It was like holy crap, man. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't accept it, man. I can't. I can't. What else we got? Is that it? Uh, no, man. Uh, you want to talk about Harley Quinn? Uh, this sucks. Day. Whoa. I'm sorry. I love Jimmy <laughs> uh, Palamati. I love Amanda Connor. Um, and they've got this new guy. Um, I want to say it's Chad. I don't Wait, remember his name. I thought you said you didn't like Amanda Connor. I like Amanda Connor's artwork. Oh, okay. Who was doing that? And uh, Nocetti's right. And Nocetti. Um, no, Amanda Connor's artwork is awesome. She did like the Silk Spectre miniseries and the Before Watchmen. Right, right, right. Uh, but no, Harley Quinn, obviously one of my favorite female characters for obvious reasons. If it wasn't, I would have named my kid that. Um, but it just doesn't seem like it's not grabbing me, especially the third issue that came out was a Valentine's Day kind of one-off. Mm -hmm. It didn't really do anything to um, to s help the story or anything. It was just kind of there. And it seems like they're just kind of going issue by issue. There is, I mean, there is a connecting story arc with it, but it doesn't seem like they're moving quick enough for me. Maybe because now e nowadays every storyline moves too fast. You know what I mean? And okay. I'm not used to it anymore. I don't know, but for some reason, like, I still read it, but it's just not catching my attention the way it should. Okay. Anybody else out there that's been picking up Harley Quinn and or anything else written by... Well, it's not written by Anna Ossetti, but if you guys have anything else to say by Anna Ossetti, Junior loves talking <laughs> about her. And he would be happy to have full conversations about her on Facebook. Those would be short conversations. Yeah. Her writing sucks. Yeah. In my opinion. Now, aside from the mainstream, have you been digging into any of the indie comics? Anything that has popped out to you? Um, there's a couple books that I've been wanting to check out, uh, such as Manifest Destiny from Image with uh, the it's the early adventures of Lewis and Clark. Yeah. 
Um, Lazarus by Greg Rucka has been pretty good. They're like six, seven issues in. That's pretty much where a world is divided by either you're rich or you're poor. The poor help the rich survive. They work for the rich. The rich get everything, throw the poor the scraps. And uh, each fam and the world, these rich people, they're ruled by families. Each family has what they call a Lazarus, who is their pretty much their their uh, their muscle for the family. They represent, you know, this family. Like family Sanchez would have a Lazarus, you know, and that Lazarus could be your sister, or your brother, or whatever, whoever. And that Lazarus is their job is to make sure the family is taken care of, you know, by any means necessary. Okay. So it's pretty ready, uh, pretty good, interesting twist. Um, one book, it, but isn't that the Hunger Games? Kinda. Yeah. It's kinda. It's just not as cheesy. Not the Hunger. I mean, Hunger Games is pretty good, but it's kind of turned up a little bit with know, Lazarus. The, the books, the Hunger Games books, are pretty. They're pretty like graphic, man. Uh, um, another book that caught my attention that for some reason now like I'm getting a brain fart on it, and it's like gonna bug me because I can't remember the title. Damn, man. You threw me off, dude. I'm oh, sorry, man. You threw me sorry, off. Sorry, I didn't but mean no, Hunger Games. There are a lot of independent books out there that are pretty good. Of course, I'm still going to throw Saga at you. Walking Dead is still chugging along. Saga has been a great read. Mm -hmm. It's been fantastic. From That's actually the only the only book that I, that I collect. Like, actually buy, and then I'll buy the trade so that people don't touch my comics. Nice. The Valiant stuff is still good. You know, you really there's really no uh, no bad stuff there. But it's been okay. Like when when they hyped up Eternal Champion, mm -hmm. I I picked it up. Okay. I bought it and I thought it was an okay read. And that's how that's also how I felt about uh, Shadow Man. Okay. Shadow Man was a good read, but it didn't like uh, it didn't blow me out of the water in any way. Mm. You know, I feel I feel like they're on they're on okay mode. You know, uh, if I had to pick between between Valiant stuff and IDW stuff, I'd probably go with. IDW because they're like the licensing giant. They have everything. What what's not a comic that that like a property that they haven't bought yet? What? I wouldn't say bought, but licensed. Like they have Transformers, they have My Little Pony, GI Joe, they have GI Joe, Body and Sherman, Powerpuff Girls. I will say this: the one license that they don't have that I'm excited for, and um, in order to I mean get my opinions on it more on uh, Spinner Rack on Fridays, but. The fact that Dark Horse is losing Star Wars, but they picked up the Nintendo license. Whoa! I actually did not know that. Yep. I did not know that. We're, we're going to be in Legend of Zelda comic books. Whoa! Oh my god. I'm guessing Metroid. Now, Brian and I were discussing, um, we, we discussed Super Mario Brothers. Can that be a comic book? And if so, what because route do you take? I know I know. Dark Horse has been putting out the Zelda hardcover because I have those. Right, I have, right, I have right. The, 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 the thick hardcovers. Um... With like the the library of like the games and stuff, and I have those. But I, I for somehow for some reason I was completely oblivious to the fact that Link is going to be on print on a yep. monthly basis. So you guys are gonna have to for more info on that, check Brian and I out on the Spinner Rack on Fridays. But uh, speaking of Fridays and every other day, our schedule for the week. Uh, once again, we're gonna go ahead and throw it at you for those just uh, tuning in. We start our week off Wednesday, breaking the fourth wall. Thursday, my reviews. For, which we still don't really have a name for. Friday, the Spinner Rack. Saturday, Alex Martinez in Collector's Corner. Sunday is our um, flip-flop day, our potluck day. where you Sunday, we, we always have something special for you guys. Yeah. yeah it's potluck. Sorry about last Sunday, though. We were kind of behind. So yeah. bear with us. We start this Sunday. Um, and Monday is our buy day, where you can go on uh, Facebook and conversate with John and Tony over uh, stuff from Monday Night Raw. And they end the week on Tuesday for us with the Lock Up Wrestling Podcast. So all that stuff and more. Uh, for everything, uh, contact us, our shows, whatever have you. Everything, Anything everything, everything. Wrestling for us. collectors for our show, comicstreamings.com is the place to go. Check it out. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Um, have a great day. How, uh, you're enjoying the season. Yeah. Peace.